This week on ATV News, a plane crash in Russia kills 62 passengers. Counterterrorism forces arrest a suspect in the 2015 Paris terrorist attacks, and one of two bald eaglets hatches at the U.S. National Arboretum. I'm Kelly Connor. And I'm Michaela Amos. ATV News starts now. Broadway's cast of Hamilton visited the White House on Monday, March 14th. They performed for the President and the First Lady, as well as a group of schoolchildren who were invited to the performance. During the visit, Lin-Manuel Miranda, the creator and the star of Hamilton, also rapped with President Obama in the Rose Garden. The President praised the cast for bringing unlikely folks together. Early this Saturday, a plane carrying 62 people crashed in Russia, killing all those aboard. Officials in Russia have ruled out terrorism as the cause, instead blaming the crash on bad weather. The plane was traveling from Dubai. Now let's go to Wes with the latest in entertainment. Thanks, Michaela. I'm Wes Young with the latest in entertainment. Reality TV star Caitlyn Jenner has inserted herself into the 2016 presidential, ele presidential election again. You may remember a while ago when Jenner stated her fondness for Senator Ted Cruz, citing his strict conservatism and saying she wished to be his trans ambassador to advise him on trans issues. Now, Jenner is saying that this was not an endorsement of Cruz, as many have reported, but rather an expression of her fondness for him and his message to fix our country. Now, many are speculating that Jenner might be changing her political views even further after she posted a picture on her Instagram with Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton, captioned with the hashtags learning from my girls and willing to listen. Gwen Stefani fans will be excited by her return with her new album This Is What The Truth Feels Like which was released on Friday. Stefani has said in numerous interviews recently that her divorce from Gavin Rosdale in 2015 was such a low point in her life and that those emotions served as a major inspiration for her new album. Another inspiration was her newfound close friendship with Blake Shelton who she says she grew close to while filming The Voice. Stefani's new album is her first solo album in nearly 10 years. The latest season of The Bachelor came to a close this past week, and 9.5 million viewers tuned in to watch Bachelor Ben find love with winner Lauren Bushnell, who he proposed to that night. The franchise has become a staple in reality TV world, but its success rate isn't much to brag about. Of the 19 couples The Bachelor has produced, only 12 have gotten engaged, and only two pairs of contestants have gotten married. Despite these statistics, fans will have yet another chance to watch love unfold as this year's runner-up, Jojo Fletcher, will be the next Bachelorette in the show's upcoming season. For entertainment, I'm Wes Young. Back to you, Michaela. Thanks, Wes. Well, I don't know about you, Kelly, but I cannot wait for another Gwen Stefani solo album. Neither can I. She hasn't put one out in like 10 years, and I'm really excited to see what she puts out next. On Friday, March 18th, Counterterrorism forces in Brussels captured Salah Abdel Slam, the last surviving member of the group who participated in the terrorist attacks in Paris that resulted in the deaths of more than 120 people. The chairman of the Center for the Analysis of Terrorism said, Salah Abdel Slam had a role in virtually every stage of the planning and the preparation. He could be the missing link to the masterminds. Four more suspects were also arrested at the scene. This week, professional wrestler Hulk Hogan celebrated after winning a lawsuit against the news publication Gawker to the tune of $155 million. Hogan accused the news site of publishing a sex tape of him without his consent in 2012. He reportedly cried after the jury's verdict was read. Let's hear from Casey Wexler with the latest in sports. Kelly, I'm Casey Wexler and here's what's happening in sports. The 2016 NCAA March Madness Tournament is in full swing. Millions entered brackets online, though thanks to numerous upsets, none remained perfect through just 25 of the 32 first round games. The Golden State Warriors continued their quest to reach and surpass the NBA record of 72 wins and 10 losses, set by the 1995-1996 Chicago Bulls. With the team currently standing at 62-6, to they have a 59% chance at beating the record with 14 games left in the season. 
With two months left in the 2016-2017 season, Leicester City holds a five-point lead at the head of the Premier League table. The Foxes continue their improbable run for the team's fans. The dream is turning into a reality. If they can come out victorious against Crystal Palace, they will have a chance to hold and even extend their lead. For sports, I'm Casey Wexler. Back to you, Kelly. Thanks, Casey. So, I personally didn't make a March Madness bracket, did you? I did, actually, and it's gotten busted in a couple of places, but my champion Kansas is still going strong, so as long as it holds out, I should be good to go. I wish you the best of luck. Thanks. At 8.20 a.m. on Friday, March 18th, a bald eaglet hatched at the Azalea Collection at the U.S. National Arboretum in Washington, D.C. Bird watchers throughout the country are rejoicing about the bald eaglets because their parents, Mr. President and the First Lady, are the first eagles to nest in the Azalea Collection since 1947. Check the DC Bald Eagle Nest Cam at dceaglecam.eagles.org this weekend to watch the second eaglet hatch. And here's Stephen Baboon with the latest in finance. Hello, I'm Stephen Baboon and here is what is happening in the world of finance. What a well-performed week for the market. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 381 points this week. The Dow Jones was up 121 points on Friday, closing the market at 17,820 points due to positive outlook on crude oil prices. The S&P 500 pushed into high territory for the week, closing at 2,049 points. The Nasdaq was up 20 points on Friday. The Nasdaq was up around 47 points for this week, closing at 4,795. Making headlines this week was Starwood Hotels. Starwood Hotels has been, has been in buyout mode for a couple weeks. This week, a $13 billion cash offer was made from China's Ang Bank Insurance Group. This offer was made right after the hotel chain Marriott made a previous offer to buy Starwood. The Chinese insurer's offer beat Marriott's previous, previously agreed cash and stock offer by almost 15%. Marriott has until March 28 to encounter and bank's offer. I'm Stephen Baboon. Back to you, Michaela. Thanks, Stephen. Now let's hear from Eric Higgis with the latest in U.S. politics. Thanks, Kelly. Welcome to ATV Politics. I'm Eric Higgis. On Tuesday, Senator Marco Rubio dropped out of the presidential race after losing his home state of Florida. Governor John Kasich had a strong showing in his home state of Ohio, with nearly 47 percent of the vote. Donald Trump won the rest of the contests, including Florida, North Carolina, Illinois, and Missouri. That leaves the delegate count at 678 for Trump, 423 for Cruz, and 143 for Kasich. On the Democratic side, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton won all five contests, adding 379 delegates to her lead. Including superdelegates, Clinton has 1,614 delegates, and Senator Sanders has 856. On Wednesday, President Obama announced his replacement for the late Justice Antonin Scalia. Judge Merrick Garland is the chief judge of the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals and is regarded as a moderate. Republican senators are sticking to their pledge not to consider any nominees until a new president is elected. Many conservative groups are already challenging his centrist label by pointing out liberal rulings on issues such as guns, abortion, and executive agency power. That's This Week in Politics. For ATV News, I'm Eric Higgis. Back to you, Michaela. Thanks, Eric. So, Kelly, are you excited about a new Supreme Court justice? I am excited because, as from what I've heard, they've been balanced equally between liberals and conservatives now, and so tensions are running really high, and I think that it's important that we get another judge in there soon. Yeah, I'm excited to see how things shake out. Well, a recent survey found that the nation's wealthiest millennials live just south of us in Arlington, Virginia. According to the survey, there are more 22 to 34-year-olds making more than $350,000 a year in Arlington than in any other city in the U.S., followed by San Francisco. On Wednesday, March 16th, President Obama nominated Judge Merrick Garland for the Supreme Court. Even though Garland is a centrist, the Republicans in Congress said they refused to consider Obama's nominee because they think he should permit the next president to nominate a judge. Until the legislative and the executive branches agree on a nominee, the highest court in the land will remain split between four liberals and four conservatives. Earlier this week, a D.C. Superior Court judge ruled that D.C. could continue to control locally raised funds without going through Congress first. 
The Budget Autonomy Act was originally approved in 2013, but has been met with resistance by those who think that it contradicts the Constitution. The new ruling means that the district will be able to control about 90% of the budget without congressional approval. Now let's hear from Arun with What's Up AU. Hi, I'm Arun Rahman and this is What's Up AU. With students back on campus after spring break, the rest of March is packed with upcoming activities and events. If you missed last week's inspiring speaker, Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, don't worry, you can hear Mark Root, the Prime Minister of the Netherlands and the current President of the European Union, speak at the SIS Atrium on Thursday, March 31st from 2.15 to 3.30 p.m. Mark Root has been the Prime Minister of the Netherlands since 2010 and is known for his passion for education. Nervous about tests? Go to the Tackling Test Anxiety Workshop on Tuesday, March 22nd from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. in MGC 245 to learn tips and strategies to alleviate anxiety before tests. Also, if you don't have a summer job or a fall internship lined up, go to the Spring Job and Internship Fair on March 23rd in Vendor Arena. Over 140 public, private, and nonprofit employers will be recruiting for full-time, part-time, and internship opportunities. Lastly, the musical No No Nanette is coming to the Greenberg Theater from March 24th to the 26th. The 1925 musical comedy is about a young, fun-loving Manhattan Harris who naughtily runs off for a weekend in Atlantic City. Love, laughter, lies, blackmail, and tap dancing ensues. For students, tickets are $10 to $15 for general admission. I'm Arun Rahman, and this has been What's Up AU. Thanks, Arun. I personally feel like we have had some amazing speakers visit AU this semester. I know, and I'm so excited to hear Donna Brazile as the Wonk of the Year. Oh, absolutely. Between the SNL cast members, Bill Nye, and now her, it has certainly been an exciting semester. That's it for ATV News. I'm Kelly Connor. And I'm Michaela Amos. Thanks for watching. And be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.